Chaim Lebracha. Chaim. We should have uh, the brachas and Yeshua and Amshachas, everything that's connected to um, to this special day. Chaim, Chaim Lebracha, Shlomi Zeicha for us, for our Mishpachas, Simchas. Yeshua, Shrefuis, and and it's often for the for the, for Yidden and Eretz Yisrael, of our enemies. Chaim, Chaim Lebracha. And the Abish there should protect the Yidden wherever they are, especially in Eretz Yisrael. Okay. So the reason for this Rabbeinian is because tonight, Chav Dalatevis is the yard set of the Alter Rebbe. So let's start with a nigan. We'll start with a nigan from the Alter Rebbe, which everyone knows, I'm sure. The Fidik Rebbe says that there was once a, um, a group of children from a certain city and um, they were having difficulty understanding Tanya. So, so they went to the Alter Rebbe. They asked the Alter Rebbe, what should we do? We're having a hard time with Tanya. The Alter Rebbe said that the key is Nagina. Nagina, singing. When you learn how to sing, then, the, then Tanya will suddenly make sense to you. <clears throat> it's a deep idea. Now I understand now, why don't, why don't I understand? Okay. <laughs> Before we start Tanya, we have to make a nigun. Yeah. 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 And a nigun opens, opens up the heart, it opens up the neshama, it, it opens up passageways. But that's when you sing a nigun, and when you sing a nigun, when you put yourself into a nigun. You don't have to have a good voice, by the way, to, uh, yeah. to, 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 be, to, to enter a nigun. It's not about having a good voice, it's not about being... It's the heart. It's about, yeah, it's about putting your heart into it. Mm -hmm but not being embarrassed and closing your eyes and then connecting, connecting with a little to something higher. Uh, the, somebody sponsored that. Uh, what's the name? Adil Abbas. The Yilu Nishmat? The Yilu Nishmat. 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 The Amen. Bring brachas down. So, um, we know by Sidim, the yard site of a tzaddik. It's not a cause for uh, despondency. It's not a time when we're sad. But we call it a hilula. Mm -hmm. And hilula in Aramaic is a wedding. So there's a simcha, just like by, by wedding, there's a simcha. So also, on a yim hilula, there's a simcha. What's the, reason, what's, the reason for the, what's the reason for the simcha of the Yarchet of the Tzaddik? So there's a simcha where the Rebbe explains. He says that we know why did the neshama come down over here into this world? 
Shama comes down here into this world. It's explained many, many, many times over and over again in Chassidus. This is the big question. Al Rebbe asked it so many times. Why does the Neshama come down over here? Imagine the Neshama is in Gan Eden. It is Chatsuva Mitachas Kisei HaKovid. The Neshama it's, uh, takes itself from, uh, it's uh, hewn out, carved out from the Kisei HaKovid. In Gan Eden it's Nenem Ziva Shechina. And then it comes down over here into this world. It's such a lowly world, such a dark world. Where it has to enter the world, it has to enter the goof, and all the challenges, and the Nafsha Bahamas, and all the desires, and the Taivas. You can imagine how difficult it is for the Neshama. As the Mishnah says in Pirkei Yavis, al right? The Neshama, it's very, very scary, very painful for the Neshama to have to come down over here. Why does the Abish to make the Neshama do that? And the reason is, as I've said many times, you read that Sayyid Chaliyah, that ultimately through the Aveda over here in this world, a neshama dafka and a neshama inaguf, and dafka with all the maniyas vikuf and with all the obstacles and with everything that's in the way. When the neshama successfully da, uh, concludes its journey, so the aliyah that it experiences afterwards, it's aliyah, it's called aliyah be'en arech, which means it's exponentially higher than what the neshama was able to uh, achieve. And its connection to the Abishtar and its pleasure in Ganeidin is so much higher than what was beforehand. Now, when a normal person passes away, So the simcha of the yard site isn't so great because did the person finish his job? Is the person really getting that aliyah? Maybe the neshama has to come back down over here and again another gilgul. But when a tzaddik passes away, we know that the tzaddik, we know that yamim yitzaru v'leyach v'bahan, which means that the Ebesher gives us a certain amount of days and every single, every single minute is meant to be used, utilized properly. As it says, v'avram zoki in baba yamim, right? Baba yamim means that every single day, he entered every single day. And every single day was a complete day. And when a person doesn't do that, when they go up to the Milo, they say, hey, you didn't finish your job. You're given 70, 80 years, 120 years. You didn't finish your job. You have to go back down. But the tzaddik utilizes the time, maximizes the time. So the tzaddik is really able to experience that aliyah. And that's why there's such, such a special simcha by the yard of the tzaddik, because this is the day when the tzaddik finally has that aliyah, which was the purpose for which his neshama came down here into this world. Now, the Rebbe says there's something special about the Alter Rebbe in this regard. If there's a simcha by every single yard side of a tzaddik, by the Alter Rebbe, it's even greater simcha. Why is that? We know the Friedrich Rebbe says, that the Balsham says, when the, when the Alter Rebbe was born, you know, the Alter Rebbe and the Balsham they share the same birthday. They both were born on, on Chai Elo, and uh, the Alter Rebbe was born on the, on the Balsham Tev's uh, 47th birthday. Now that day, the Baal Shem Tev told his Talmudim that you should know that a Nisham, today a Neshama Chadasha came down here into this world. A new Neshama came down here into this world. What does that mean, a new Neshama? You know, all of our Neshamas, we are all Gilgulim. And it's, uh, our Neshamas, it's not the first time that our Neshamas were down here in this world. Originally, you know, the, this is something we learned about over the, over the years in Tanya in different places that other Meridian had the master soul, right? the neshama klolos, which contained within it the neshama of all klal yisrael, and uh, that that neshama had six hundred has six hundred thousand um, sh- sharashim, six hundred thousand different uh, parts to it, and those it, it, one part, those six hundred thousand parts were the neshamas of the six hundred thousand eaten by matan tera, and then those six hundred thousand neshamas further divided, subdivided, and ultimately every single one of us has one of those neshamas. So our neshamas. We're here a long time ago, here in an other tradition, Matan Teira. But in Kabbalah, it's brought down that when Mashiach comes, then we're going to have Neshamas Chadashas. Mashiach comes, then the Neshamas that are born are going to be at a much higher level. Not the Neshamas that were by other tradition, not even the Neshamas that are Gan Eden, but Neshamas from entirely, entirely higher, higher level altogether. Those are the Neshamas that will be born when Mashiach comes. It's brought down in Kabbalah. Yes. So what's about everybody that's going to uh, reawaken by Mashiach? Those are not the old Neshamas? So there'll be a mixture of old Neshamas and the Neshamas. Mashiach comes. The bottom line is that the Balsam says that the Alter Rebbe had a Neshama Chadasha, which means it was a Neshama, it was the first time it was coming down, which means that essentially the Alter Rebbe had a Neshama from Mashiach's times. That's the Madriga of the, of the Alter Rebbe's Neshama. So every neshama, so the neshama of a tzaddik, it comes down here, go, it, and, and then the, the tzaddik, the tzaddik uh, 
is nostalgic, right? There's the Ptira, the Tzaddik, the Tzaddik goes up, but it isn't the first time for the Tzaddik. It isn't the first time that the Nishama is having this Aliyah. It's talking the greatest Aliyah, but it's not the first time. So the Simcha isn't as, isn't as great by the Alter Rebbe, because it was a Nishama Chadasha. So when his Nishama goes up, it's the first time that it's experiencing that joy of the, uh, of the, of the uh, Aliyah, which comes as a result of the Yeridah, so the Simcha is even greater. Yeah. So what the Tikkunim? Sorry? Shama come down to make a tikkun. Uh, What's that? Today, today is not questions day. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a shear. In a shear, you ask questions. If you don't understand something, it's also fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Say no, you can listen, you can comment also. What I'm saying is, I'm not going it's, to. It's not a shear where I'm going to start explaining the, you know, going into giving you pulpulum and explaining everything. And to state the about finding Gemara Darton and a Masha Darton and a Pnei Yeshua is over there. That's next week. Next week we'll, we'll get back to <laughs> the pull pulling. <laughs> yeah. No, so the Alter Rebbe speaks in Tanya. He speaks about Simcha, the importance of Simcha, and that's always in Mifnat when it comes to Yem Hilula. It's a time for a time for extra Simcha. Chaim, Chaim Levracha. So I want to tell you a story that I heard recently. So a few months ago, I get a WhatsApp from a friend of mine. He's a shliach in Massachusetts. And his name, he's probably two, three years younger than me. His name is Moshe Bleich. A shliach in Massachusetts. And he tells me, I know that you speak in different places and you are in different places. So I have a story I want to tell you. I want to tell you a story, if you, then you, and feel free to share the story. Do you have time tomorrow for me to call you? I'm like, sure, okay. Anyways, next morning he calls me up, and he starts telling me the story. So who's this Moshe Blach? So first of all, this Moshe Blach, um, again, I don't know him well. I got to know him a little more over the years. Around 15 years ago, I, I, I was with him once, and we were talking, and he, he's telling me a little about his background. He's not from Lubavitcher Mishpacha, he's from a Stalner Mishpacha. Sorry? The Rabbi Vlad from Kiev's brother. Yes, yes, the, the brother of the Rabbi Vlad from Kiev, yes. He's very loud. But he's not, not today he's a Lubavitcher. <laughs> <laughs> and he became a Lubavitcher. When he was 13, 14 years old, he became a Lubavitcher. I remember when I was speaking to him many years ago, I asked him, what, what brought you to what brought you to Lubavitch at the age of 13 or 14 years old and around that time? So he told me then, I remember, was, he stuck out. He says that at that time I was, I was looking, I was searching. I went to a lot of different Rebbes. And he says, there's so many amazing, beautiful, holy Rebbes out there. But when I went to the Lubavitch Rebbe, I experienced something I didn't experience by any other Rebbe. That when I stood in front of the Rebbe, I, 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 I was trembling. So I never, I didn't experience that by any other rabbi. This idea that Pasha, you stood in front of him and it was so, the awesomeness was so incredible. I was literally shaking. And by the way, I, I, I was born in Lubavitch, obviously. I mean, I don't know if you can say that. I, I was born to a Chabad, the Lubavitch family. And uh, I could totally relate because I, def I definitely remember standing in, you know, in front of the rabbi and there's no question that it was... Uh, it was an awesome experience, Megitzitet. Megitzitet, he trembled. So, I'm speaking to him again. So this is again, this is going back, I don't know, four months ago, probably around. And he tells me like this, he says, you should know that I was always, he says, I was always proud of myself. Because, yeah, there are people who become, who uh, choose to become Lubav Chachsidim. Most of them, you know, they're older, seven, you know, 17, 18, 19, even older. And I didn't know anyone else who's uh, at the age of 13 or 14, that's a very young age, to decide to become a Lubav And I always... I always uh, held that as a, a badge of pride, you know, that something special about me that I had that uh, special courage at that young age to, to follow where I wanted to go into the Kabbalah And he says, recently, 
It was revealed to me that I can't take any credit whatsoever for this. What happened? He says that a little while ago, so again, this is what happened this past summer. Someone told him that, they, they were, that there's, there's an organization called GEM, Jewish Educational Media, and they have pictures and videos, in other words, of, of the Rebbe, and if people want to buy dollars by the Rebbe, so you can go and you can find them there. They're always, they're constantly releasing more. Uh, they, they release them. Around two, three years ago, they released the pictures of my bar mitzvah, my uh, aliyah by the Rebbe, which was another. They, were, they released them in, in batches. So recently, recently, they released a batch of, uh, of pictures. It was from a dollars, the Rebbe giving out dollars in 1988. And it was in the Rebbe's house. It was in the year after the Rebbe passed away. The Rebbe passed away, Chaf Beishat, 1988. And the year after the Rebbe passed away, so the Rebbe, most of the year, the Rebbe stayed at home. And davened at home, except for Shabbos, and the Rebbe went to 770. But aside from Shabbos, the entire, the, throughout the week, the Rebbe was at home. The Minyanim were at home, and, and, the, and Sunday dollars were in the Rebbe's house. That lasted for another year, and then they went back to 770. It still came back occasionally, once in a while, but the uh, Cholos Rebbe then moved to 770. So this was in the Rebbe's house. If I recall correctly, it was Pesach Sheni of Tavshim Memchas, 1988. And some of them going through the pictures, and saw there's a picture of this young boy, Moshe Bleich. He's there together with his father. At that point of time, he's nine years old. Nine years old. And he goes, and, and, and he says, there's a picture of you, the Rebbe giving a dollar to you and your father. And he was surprised by this because he had no memory of this. He had no memory of, the, of his father taking him ever to the Rebbe. So he went immediately, he went onto the Gem website and he ordered two pictures and large, one for himself, one for his parents. And then as he was doing this, he realized, hey, this is not a picture. This is actually a video still, which means that there's a video of it. It's a, a video still is a picture which is grabbed. It's a, a, a grab from a video. So... He got, a, he, he, he got a hold of the video. He could pay some money, he got the video. And he got the surprise of his life. He goes, he goes by the Rebbe and he gets a dollar. And then his father goes by. And his father asks a bracha for, if I recall his name correctly, I think Moshe Yehuda ben Sarafega, I think that was the name. In other words, for his son, for the Moshe Bleich. He says, I would like a, a bracha for Yiddish Shemayim. The Rebbe gives him a dollar and says, Besuras Tevis, when a chassid by Yunzeichet, he should also be a chassid by us. <laughs> he asked for a bracha for Yerush Shemaim. The Rebbe said, gave him a dollar, Besuras Tevis, and a chassid by Yunzeichet. He also should be a chassid by us. And it's, like, it's, it's, it's like almost hard to believe. But sure, as soon as I got off the phone, he sent me the video. I have the video. You send the video, you see it very clearly. And um, it's very interesting because it says he didn't remember this. His father doesn't, didn't remember this. Because the Rebbe, it was a very, it was a very um, like nonchalant statement. It wasn't, the Rebbe wasn't like looked him in the eye and said that in a dramatic way. It was like the Rebbe is already giving the dollar to the next person as he's saying it. He's like, he to, um, no. Was his father a His father was a stoner chassid. So there is a Stalmer Chassid, it's father's still around. Um, no, there's totally, never heard that before. Tell me that's what I did before. And like I said, I think the Rebbe is like, I give him Dabba's Rebbe, so there's Tevis and Achasa, and the Rebbe is already giving the dollar to the next one. I mean, it's obvious the Rebbe is talking to him, but it's like, it happens so fast. It happens so fast that it's not even surprising that people didn't pick up it over there. But the video, it's very, very clear what happened over there. And he says, suddenly, my whole bubble is burst. You know, my whole thing that I was so proud of myself that I became a Lubavitcher, and I realized it had nothing to do with me. <laughs> nothing, the Rebbe decided that I'm going to, for whatever reason, you have to realize that uh, thousands and thousands of, of people went by the, um, the, um, the Rebbe by dollars, including many people who weren't Lubavitchers, many people who were, who were, who were, who were, who were from or chassidim. Went to, uh, this, but this, for whatever reason, the Rebbe decided that this kid is going to become a Lubavitcher, and sure enough, Three years later, he's a Lubavitcher. Three years later, he's a Lubavitcher. Today, he's a Sliak in Wellesley, Massachusetts. Did you ever come back to the Rebbe? Yeah, he became a Lubavitcher. Three no, years did he ever come back to the Rebbe? Of course. So, so this after happened when he was eight years old? The nine year old? After when he was nine years old. Yeah. Three years later. Well, yeah. He's a Lubavitcher. 1991, 1992, he's already, he's, yeah. yeah. In 1992, he's already in the Lubavitcher Shiva in England. 
came back many times. I told you, he said that when he stood in front of the Rebbe, he trembled. He remembered. He didn't remember that dollar exchange. He just remembered later when he came. He did not remember that. He didn't remember that his, that his father ever took him to the Rebbe for dollars. So the first thing we see here are some words that the Rebbe threw out. As they say, Kalachayad. And if you, if you watch the video, and if you want, after the Fabrengen, I can show you all the video if you want. Um, the Rebbe throws out the words, and as they say, right? with, with the, uh, So certainly, we'll start off with the main Nakuda, which is that the Rebbe says that hine hine Mashiach ba, that this is the door of Geula. We can be uh, confident that Davar uh, Echad is that it's going to happen, and the Rebbe said it in a way of Nevoa, and it's going to happen, and we're going to uh, we have to do whatever we need to do, and we will do it, and we'll be zeicher very soon, very soon from the Kabbalah of Mashiach Zakeina. That's first of all. <laughs> <laughs> but there's another Nakuda, and I'm talking um, to everyone over here, but I want to talk specifically to the people who are over here, who come every Thursday night. those who are known in English as Tanya Groupies. <laughs> and right now, the Tanya Shir is uh, approximately 10 years old, somewhere around there, right? 10 around 10 years old. I think we started in Tavshanai and Tavshanai and Dalit. And we are a few classes away, a few classes away from finishing Tanya. There are probably another six classes left, and we're going to finish the whole Tanya, which is a monumental... Uh, Monumental accomplishment, and I have to thank you all, by the way. We thank you. I, as they say, Yeser Mamash Eagle, you know, the Gemara, the Chazal tell us, Yeser Mamash Eagle, Reitza Linek, Apara Reitza Lahanik, the more than the more than the calf wants to nurse, the mother wants the, the kid to nurse from her, right? The, um, Especially the mommy cows. Yes, that's what we're talking about. Well, the Tati cows don't nurse. <laughs> No, but it's not only that. The MS is as I the MS is that I got the better part of the of the deal than you did. We don't think so. So okay, we can, we, can, we, can, we can respectfully disagree. Sheldon, you agree with me? But there is no thank you. There is no greater gift than teaching. And so a, a rule of life that when you teach someone else the level that you need you never learn something as well as when you have to teach it. So what I so what you've given me the opportunity to be able to learn Tanya in the, in the depth that is necessary in order to teach it is an incredible gift. And parts of Tanya that I'd never learned, and I, I pro- might have never have learned them. I'm talking specifically about the last Prakim of Tanya that we're learning, the very deeply Kabbalistical Prakim, to whatever degree we understand it, okay? Which I'm, we're all aware that uh, our understanding of these Kabbalistical concepts is very weak, but to whatever degree, and it's because of you, because of you. So I, I, I appreciate that. And there can also be a certain level of uh, of svias a certain level of satisfaction. Satisfaction. Finish Tanya. And I think that uh, one of the lessons of this story that I just said is we have to realize that the Al Rebbe chose us. The Rebbe chose us. We know that it says in, the, in, the, in, in Tanya, in the beginning of Tanya, it says, the Alter Rebbe says in the introduction, he says, Ach of makirai ka'amina. He says that he's writing the Tanya for the people who are Yehida and Makira, the people who I know. And but there's a Messiah Rabbi Chassidim, but that's anyone who learns Tanya. We are Yehida and Makira. The Rebbe says, I know you, Sheldon, I know you. Yeah. And Ashrenu uh, Matir Cholkeinu, that for whatever reason, there's so many Yidin in this world who aren't yet exposed to Tanya, aren't they yet exposed to Chassidus, the Oyer, the light. The teachings of the Baal Shem Tev. and um, realizing that this is our responsibility, just like this, uh, this Rabbi Moshe Bleich. So, what's he doing now? He's teaching. He's teaching others. When we're chosen, when we are, when we were chosen, yeah, we had bechirah chavshes, hundred percent, we had bechirah But at the end of the day, when we're chosen, chosen for the special gift that comes with an achrayis, achrayis to pass on this gift, to, to keep on, uh, to share it with others. 
and to uh, to give a shabach v'heidoya l'asham yisbarach to give to thank the Abishter that we were chosen to be the people who are, are able to benefit from this light, from the light of Chassidus. By Chassidim, there's a muscle. I once heard, the, I once heard this muscle. Maybe I've said it here in the past. That once in Gehenna, there was a very, very big fire. Everyone's like, yeah, of course, it's Gehenna. No, but this was a really, really big fire. And actually, the whole Gehenna burnt down. That's it. All our Gehenna. Finally, after all the thousands of years of the fires raging, it's like the, you know, there's a, a big matzah factory with a big oven, and boom, the whole place combusted. So we have a problem, right? So we need a new Gehenna. Notice the Malachim got busy, and they built a brand new Gehenna. Once they're building a brand new Gehenna, you have to realize the old, the old Gehenna is thousands of years old, now it's a new Gehenna. In the thousands of years since, there's uh, been new amenities that have been, uh, so it was a bra- it was, it was f- fancy Gehenna, modern, modern, a new fancy modern Gehenna. And then what happened was, sorry, that's, that's not part of the story, but what happened was that the Neshamis in Gan Eden found out <laughs> that while they're in a Gan Eden, which is thousands of years old, and everything is decrepit and breaking down, and then there's and then show him the, 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 the Gehenna is a modern, is a brand new Gehenna. So they got jealous. So they went to Bezna Shalmaila and they complained. And Bezna Shalmaila decided they're right. And what happened was they transferred all the Rishonim out of Gehenna. And the old Gehenna, the new Gehenna became the new Gehenna became the new Ganetan. That's it. Allah Tzadikim went to Gehenna. I heard a joke recently, I hope I'm not going to mess it up. <laughs> we know that by the... See, this uh, Alitvisha, he dies. He goes to Gehenna for his Avedis. Short while later, maybe the joke is hitting too close to home because the, the Mashkiach passed away. It was nostalgic this week. No, uh, well, Lakewood. I don't mean him, Chas Vashalom. His mashkiach from his yeshiva also passes away. And on the way, he passes by Gehenna. And he sees uh, his, for, his, his Talmud there. He looks in. Says, I warned you about it. I warned you this is what would happen. Then there's a Breslover. And he dies. And he gets sent off to Gehenna. Now we all know what happens when a Breslover uh, goes to Gehenna. What happens? Yeah. Rav Nachman comes and pulls him up by the pace and pulls him straight to, to Gehenna. And then Al-Babachar passes away. And he goes to Gehenna. And Al-Babachar passes by. Al-Babachar looks in and says, Ah, this is your place of shlichas. <laughs> <laughs> what does it mean that the old Gehenna becomes the new Gehenna? What is uh, the inner message of this silly muscle? And the... the The punchline of this marshal is that that's what the Alter Rebbe did with Chassidus. What Chassidus, what Alter Rebbe did was that he turned Gehenna into Gan Eden. What does it mean that he turned Gehenna into Gan Eden? For thousands of years, Yidin lived with a certain Hanacha, lived with a certain uh, understanding, a certain basic assumption, which is that Olam Haza is a bad place. So why did Hashem put us here in Olam Haza? Why did He put us in this awful place? Because we are meant to survive the experience. 
And when we survive the experience, and we survive, and we surmount all the challenges and obstacles that Elam Haza presents, Elam Haza is a very, very hostile environment for a neshama. And it's very easy for a person, as we know, we know from a personal experience, it's very easy to stumble and to fall because of all of the, because of the unholy environment that we're in. And when a yid stays strong and is not in a spell and survives the experience and survives intact with Kedusha intact, oh, the Nachas that they Mr. gets, and then you go up to the, then, then the then person passes away. The Shama goes up to the higher world, you go to the good place. The good place is Gan Eden. Came along the Alter Rebbe and Tanya, and the Alter Rebbe turned everything on its face. With the most revolutionary idea in Chassidus Chabad, which is words that we use on a regular basis, but to understand what the implications of these words are. That we're not meant to survive this world. It's not why the Abishter created the world and put us down here. It's because the Abishter wants us to survive the world. But we're put down here in this world because this is where it's at. This is where the game is being played. And this is where the Abishter wants to be. And we're working towards a goal. And the goal is Yemei San Mashiach. When there will be Gili Alakus down here in this world. And that's what the Abishter wants. And all the higher worlds and Gan Eden and Atsilus, all these worlds are nice. But Seif Maise B'Machshav Atchila. Seif Maise is our world. It's the Seif, it's the end, the lowest. It's Maise, it's the world of Maise, the world of Atsia. But ultimately, that was b'machshav atchila. That was the original intent of the Eivisha. That's the kavana, the takhlots kavana. Where put in other words, no, it's tchilasan b'seifan, as we have in Sefer Yitzira. B'seifan b'tchilasan, the idea, the beginning is wedged, the end, the end, the beginning. The beginning, the tchilasan is the Eivisha. Eivisha himself, atzmusay, mahusay, the essence of the Eivisha. And where is the Eivisha? Where does he want to be? He wants to be dafka over here in Elam Atzai in the words of Shleim HaMalach, when Shleim HaMalach, uh, he inaugurated the Beis HaMikdash, he said, HaShamayim Ushmei HaShamayim Lo Yichal Kalucha Va'af Ki Abayis Hazeh He says, hey, Bishter, take a look at this, HaShamayim Ushmei HaShamayim, the heavens, the highest of heavens, Lo Yichal Kalucha, they can't, they're not a keli for you. Va'af Ki Abayis Hazeh, and this house is, but it was a Tmiya Kayamas, he said, as he is, that's the Mitzias, that is. That the, the levels of godliness which are present in the which cannot even be present in the highest worlds, the Dafka, and that's in the Beis HaMikdash, but it's also in every single Peruch of Gimel and Tanya and Peruch Lamed Zayin and Tanya, the talks about, especially about Limit HaTayra, what we accomplish when we learn Tayra. So when we learn Tayra, he says the level of Alakus, that at that moment we're being exposed to, that not only we're being exposed to, that we're becoming one with, because the Torah, we're learning, it becomes part of who we are. It enters our seichu. It says in the higher worlds, if they would be exposed to that, they would evaporate. Poof. They wouldn't be able to handle that air. And that's the air that when we learn Torah, in the, in the Lashon of Chassidus, is called Seiv of Kalalim. The light of the, the light, which is so high, it transcends all the worlds. That is the light we're becoming one with who learned Torah. Daf over here in Elam HaZagashmi. Daf over here. Why does David Shter want to speed Adam? As Dr. Rebbe said, Ava taiva is kinkasha nishfran. It says, Nesava Kaddish Baruch Hashem had a taiva. And you can't ask, what do you like better, this or this? The cake or the potato chips? Neither. Neither. But you ate cake. Why not potato chips? Too fattening. It's too fattening, that's why? <laughs> <laughs> you like the sweet better than the, the, than the salty. Why, why? Why don't you like the salty better than the sweet? Both of them are good, not salty. Uh, yeah, you're, you're answering from your head, not from your... Uh, you, <laughs> yeah. Right? So, uh, 
That you like and that you don't. But why do you like that and not this? <laughs> you can't ask a question on why you want, why you want something, right? The Abishter wanted a dirabit tachtoinim. Hashem wanted, he wanted not the cake, he wanted the potato chips. Why are you speaking Yiddish to his father? <laughs> because they are the best. Sounds when you're a Friday? And the good Jews. After all these years, I never knew that. <laughs> I thought the Ben Yishchai was, uh, was from Prague or from... Uh... <laughs> I would just speak them in Hebrew, actually. No, you, you put in some Yiddish yeah. there. Oh, because that's a quote. That's actually a quote from the Alter Rebbe, and it's, it's in Yiddish. It's not in Tanya, but there's, um, there's a mimer from the Rebbe Rashab. But the Rebbe Rashab talks about this idea of, of, of Dirbet Achtoyim, and the Rebbe Rashab asks, why, you know, why does they, why does they still want it? And he says, as the Alter Rebbe says, and he quotes in Yiddish, as if a taiva is kinkash is faran. So it's Yiddish. It's actually that's the original quote. I'm not translating something into Yiddish. That's actually the original quote. Yiddish sound bad. It's true. Something, some things you can't translate into. Do you understand it? Yeah, that's never seen Yiddish. Understand it? Here we go. <laughs> And that's what it means when we say that the old Gehenna becomes the new Ganeta. Elam Hasa used to be considered the Gehenna. <coughs> and suddenly comes along Al Tereb and says, What Gehenna? This is Ganeta. <coughs> After the Stalkus of the Friedrich Rebbe, by Fabregen, we don't take potato chips with a spoon. It just, uh, it just doesn't, uh, it's not right. I, I'm, te I'm teasing you, I'm teasing you. <laughs> I'm just like, no, I'm just like, I'm not going to put my hand in the air. I was here. Everybody else is just here. Just like, you know. Naim and Hagim. What does Naim and Hagim mean? Let's hear this. What is Naim and Hagim? No, Naim and Hagim. Oh, new Naim. And Hagim Chadashim. Yeah. Habrengen, the potato chips with a spoon. And cake with a fork. It's a Naim. No. But Habrengen, Sean, also eat with the hands. It's like a... Like the cook you don't have to. You're in the shell don't worry. You don't have to. <laughs> it's, too it's too hot anyway. <laughs> you know, it's like that there's, a, you know, it's a, sitting by a kiddush and there's a nine, nine, uh, nine yakis nine and one ungarasha. Yeah. And there's one piece of herring on a plate. And everyone's looking at it, but who's going to eat that piece of herring? Because uh, there's one piece of herring and there's 10 people around the table, right? <laughs> Again, you have one ungarasha and nine yakis, but suddenly the light goes off. I hear a scream. The light goes back on, and you see the, the Ungarish has his hand on the fish, and there's nine forks in his hand. Say <laughs> 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 playing clue in Jewish. Sorry? Say <laughs> playing clue. Put your hand in there. It's like, yeah, that game, yeah. A board game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But it's not only Elam Haza in general. Al Rebbe says, you know, you thought this is Gehenna. Oh, so I, I was saying um, in the first year after after the Stalkus of the Friedrich Rebbe, so this is 1950. If you ever, if you ever have time or interest to re, to learn the Sichas of that year, to read them, because it's, there were no, that, that year there were no mamarim. The Rebbe didn't say any mamarim because the Rebbe didn't, wasn't officially yet, didn't accept upon himself being a Rebbe. The Rebbe says a mamar, so it's sikhis. If you want to know what it means to be a chassid, you have to read those sikhis, the year long of Siddim, to, to hear the way that the, the Rebbe speaks about the Friedrich Rebbe. We know in general, the Rebbe taught us what it means to be a chassid. We had no idea what it means. And the Rebbe taught us what does it mean to be Makusha, what does it mean to be connected. And, and that we saw throughout the years, you know, even 40 years after the passing of the, of, of, of the, of the Fidiki Rebbe, when someone wrote to the Rebbe and asked for a bracha, what was the standard response? Asker al I'll, uh, I'll mention to you for a bracha by the, by the, by the Fidiki Rebbe, well, by, by my, by my father-in-law. Well, the, oh, the Rebbe went a few times a week over there. And you, the, the Rebbe's, the Rebbe's connection, the, the, and every level of the neshama to the Fidik Rebbe, I say, I think is most expressed in the sikhs of that year. And one of the times the Rebbe says that I got a letter or something that someone writes to me about the Fidik Rebbe, wrote uh, the Rebbe, the Rebbe Nishmasa Eden. And the Rebbe started crying. And they said, what Nishmasa Eden? 
What in the Shammah's Gan Why are you sending away the Rebbe to Siberia? That's what they said. Like you think Gan Eden is like sending the Rebbe to Gan Eden is like sending him to Siberia. He doesn't want to be in Gan Eden. The Rebbe wants to be over here in this world. This is where it's at. This is where the action is at. You know, this is, talk about, the, you know, the Gehenim becoming Gan Eden, Gan Eden becoming the Gehenim. The Rebbe is saying that to, to say to send, to send off someone to Gan Eden is like sending them to Siberia. Because, this is where you get to do a mitzvah. This is where you get to, um, to serve the Abish there. So what for generations everyone thought is Gehenim comes along to Dr. Rebbe and says, no, this is Gan Eden. This is the, this is the most amazing place over here, Elam Haza. And as we mentioned in the past on several occasions when we learned Simen Chof and Igaris HaKadosh, the Simen Chof, it's a long and a deeply Kabbalistical chapter, which we uh, braved and we learned this past year. Or two, I don't remember, within the last two years we learned it. And it, the Alter Rebbe wrote it in the days before he passed away. Literally in the days before he passed away. He, fi he finished it right before he passed away. And what is the whole Likud of the letter? As Alter Rebbe ends up with, Bezeh, Yuvan, Gredel, Mailas, Mitzvah, Maisis, and Elam Hazai, Gashmi. As Alter Rebbe is preparing to move on, to transition to the next world, what's Alter Rebbe thinking about? The Mail of our world, the Mail of doing a Mitzvah in our world. And it's not only our world in general. But it's all those things in the world that we think are Gehenim. We look at ourselves. <coughs> and we see we have a Yitzhahara. <sighs> we have Avedis. We're lazy, we're selfish, we have Tivus, anger management issues, control issues. New York City, but okay. Spirit, what? It's New York City, bro. Okay. It's New York City. <laughs> yeah. Everything is like that. Uh, yeah. And we're, we're in a personal Gehenna. Okay. It comes along, Dr. Rebbe says, you're not in Gehenna, you're in Ghanaian. What I mean by that thing, Gan Eden? The idea that this world is a Tachel Tzachavana. And we have to look at the world and realize what it is. This is the place, the Eberster, the Eberster chose this place. Is expressed in the words of the Pasuk in Shir Hashirim, Basi Lagani Achisi Kala. These are words which every Lubavitch is very familiar with because the last Mimer, that the Friedrich Rebbe, Friedrich Rebbe published a mimer to be learnt on the day that he passed away. Friedrich Rebbe passed away in Yutzvat, which is coming up in two weeks. And in honor of that of Yutzvat, Tavshin Yud, he passed away in honor of that day, in advance of that day, he sent to print a mimer to be studied on Yutzvat. It came, it came from the printer on Friday. And that mimer begins with the words, Basi Yadagani. What does Basi Yadagani mean? Hashem says, this is Hashem speaking, he says, Basi Lagani Achesi Kala, I've come, I've come to my garden. And what is the garden? Elam Hazai Gashmi. As the Medr says in Shir Hashim Rabba, the Medr says that originally when Hashem created the world, Iker Shechina Betachtoinim Haisa, the Iker Shechina was down here in this world. And then there were a series of Averis. And the Averis pushed the Abish there farther and farther away. The first Averis was the Chet Eitzadas. Then there's the Chet Kain Vehevel. And others, the Mabul, Der Enish. Stoim, seven Avedis all together, they push the Abish to the top of the seven heavens. And then the Medir says, And then there stood up seven Sadiqim. They bring the Shekhinah down here. Who are the seven Sadiqim? Avram, Yitzchak, Yaakov, Levi, Kahas, Amram, Moshe. Did I skip anyone? Avram, Yitzchak, Yaakov, Levi, Kahas, Amram, Moshe. And Moshe Rebbein, who is the Shvi. And the Chol HaShvi and Chavivin, the seventh ones are all precious. He brought the Shekhinah down here to this world, and then, in the Mish and then in the Mishkan. And when Hashem came back down here into this world, what does Hashem say? This what the, Hashem says, Basi Lagami, I've come back to my garden. What is this world? This world is the Gan. This world is Hashem's garden. It's a place of pleasure. What is a, a garden? A garden is a place of pleasure, a place of delight. This is where the Abishter wants to be. But we have to create this home for Hashem. And how do we create this home for Hashem? So the paradigm that we have is 
the Mishkan. So we have to look at the Mishkan, because the Mishkan is the way to bring the Abishter here into this world. What was the Mishkan made out of? The Mishkan was made out of Atzei Shittim. What does the word Shittim mean? Vayeshev Yisrael B'Shittim. So obviously Atzei Shittim in a simple sense is a cedar wood, but it's, there's a, it's related to another word, which is the idea of Shtus. Shtus, insanity. You want to know how we build a Mishkan for the Eibeshter? Out of Shtus. <laughs> this is what the Fidikami writes in this memory. And then furthermore, out of the Atzishitim, what did they make? What were the walls made out of? Atzishitim, that became, what's the word? Karashim. Keresh. Take the word Keresh, turn around the letters, and what do you have the words? Sheker. You want to know how you create, uh, 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 how you create uh, uh, a home for Hashem here in this world? You need some sheker. You need to throw in some sheker. You need to have some shtus and some sheker. And then what do you do in the Mishkan? We take behemoths and bring karbanas. So add in your behema. Okay? <laughs> this is crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. The shtus, the sheker. Your behemoth, Bahamas, this is a, you know what, you have no shtus, you have no sheker, you have no behemoth, you're not making a home for the Ebishter. By the way, that's why Malachim can't make a dira for Hashem. You know why? They have no sheker. They have no shtus. And they have no behemoth. And that's why the Abishter gave us Teirah. As the Gemara says, that when, Meisha, when the Malachim says, we want to get to Teirah, what does what 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 the Abishter tell them? Klum Yitzhahara Yesh Benechem. You guys have Yitzhahara? No, no Yitzhahara, no Behema. How are you going to bring Kabbalah to the Abishter if you have no Behema? Think about that for a second. How are you going to bring a carbon? What, what's a carbon? Your carbon, you come with your calf, you come with your sheep, but what are you really bringing to the Abishter? What are you? Adam Ki Yakriv. You want to get close to the Eibishter? You want to know how you get close to the Eibishter? Mikem, Karban Lashem, you have to bring your own. The egg and the carbon, your own behemoth you have to bring to the Eibishter. And that's how you become close to the Eibishter. And if you don't have a behemoth inside you, then you're a Malach. If you're a Malach, you're very holy, but you're not building a Mishkan for the Eibishter. As I mentioned before, that Simon Chaf in Egeris HaKedish, that Rebbe talks right before he passes away, what's he talking about? He's talking about... He's talking about the Maila of Elam Hazah, Mitzvah Elam Hazah. There's, there's another piece he wrote, around 15 lines. Mamish, in the, in the hours before he passed away, he wrote himself a, a note. And it begins with the words, HaNefesh HaShvela. So it's called the Rishima of HaNefesh HaShvela. Now, Rebbe passed away on Matzah Shabbos, by the way. Talking about Gehenim. There's, um, where do you look at the Sikhs around there? Tezayim. Thank you so much. By the way, regards from your son. I spoke, yeah. Uh, no. Montreal. Yes. Spoke to him. Anyways. Um, <coughs> and in this, and in this note, it's, it's hard to decipher. Now, the Rebbe there talks about the Milo of Chesed doing Chesed in this world. And he says, and specifically, I'm talking about Chesed, which is Sheker. He says it. Not Chesed Shalemes. Chesed Shalemes is when you, a person really needs something and you come to their help. It's a, it's a, emis, a, a real need the person has. And then there's sometimes, there's a Chesed, and you're like, yeah. It's time. The person, the, the person wants this for no reason. The person doesn't need it. The person, right? Uh, I'm giving in to the person's. Uh, in this last in the hours before he passed, he passed away Matzah Shabbos. Mir Avdala passed away a few hours later. He's writing about the 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 the, the value of sheker. 
which is so counterintuitive. But again, he realized everything about that I would talk about tonight, this is all counterintuitive. It's all counterintuitive. Always the one you're looking for, you can't find. That's the way it works. So what is oh, you found it. <clears throat> so what is the value of Shaq? That's, the, what the, that's what this world is. And therefore, when you do a chesed to a person, don't, 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 ha don't have your holy thoughts that it's because the person needs it, and with an MS and no serving the Abish are worth it, just give, do the chesed. Do the chesed. I first chesed to MS is where you, you can't possibly get anything out of it. Like when you go to Levaya. I know, I know, but the, the, the Alter is not talking about that over there. Uh, you, you're correct. You, what you're saying is correct, yes. Now, he rests like this. Wouldn't it elaborate that, you know, that uh, if someone does chesed, they're actually looking at anything in return? Yeah, but the, 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 that's not what we're talking about right now. So the Tzemach Tzedek writes that the Alter Rebbe passed away in Motzeh Shabbos Kedush. Chav Gimel Eir Lechav Dalat Tevis. A half an hour before before midnight. So the Rebbe, you know, you know how the Rebbe, the Rebbe, everything has to be exact. So, um, I mean, why does he have to say it's not the Shabbos? Obviously, if, if you look in the calendar, that you're chaved out to the, why, why is he, why is he adding it in? So the Rebbe says, Yeshleimer, Tam HaYisafel, Yeshleimer, why does Tamar Sadek adds in the word that Dalta Rebbe passed away by Matzah Shabbos? And the Rebbe said, but first, I, there's, a, there's a question over here. L'chayr, not only should, not only didn't he have to say it, he shouldn't say it because the Chayr brings out something negative, because the Gemara says in Masechus Ksubis, Meis be Erev Shabbos, Simen Yofalei. When someone passing away in Erev Shabbos is a good sign. The Matzah Shabbos, Simen Yofalei, it's a bad thing, it's a bad Simen to pass away in Matzah Shabbos. So why is the Tzamat Tzadak emphasizing that the Tzadak passed away in Matzah Shabbos? But the Diyuk is as follows. A person who passes away in Erev Shabbos, Simen Yofalei, it's good for him. Loi. Why? As Rashi explains, because then he goes right away into Gan Eden, because in Shabbos, Gan Eden, uh, Gehenim is closed. But, for Tzoyin Marisei of Anasi Yisrael, this is the words of the Rebbe, for the sheep of the flock of Anasi, so the opposite is true, because we know that when Tzadik can pass away, it's a Yisrael and Lamayla. And the Chesed of the Abish there is revealed in all the worlds, and Bispoil Yeshuas. And therefore, Davke Matzah Shabbos, when it begins the Avedah of the week, when the when when when, when the Chassidim need the most help, so that is most beneficial for the Chassidim, and therefore in Nesiyah Yisrael, who they they think about themselves, they don't think about themselves. They're not thinking about their own alias, but rather they're concerned about the matzav of all the other Yidden, and especially on Matzah Shabbos, because then we need Besamim, because the Neshama you say the leaves, and that's where that's when we have to say Altira of the Yaakov. And therefore, and even when tzaddikim are nostalgic, they don't abandon chas v'shalom, the, the sheep of their flock. So for them, they'd prefer to pass away on Matzah Shabbos. So this way, the week of, the, of, of their chassidim will be a good week, even though that for them, it's taka greyesa, even though for them, it's, 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 it's less good. Talk about Gehenna, yeah, yeah, interesting. Gimel Tammuz, Matzah Shabbos. Gimel Tammuz, Shabbos, yes. The Rebbe Shabbos passed away Matzah Shabbos. Yeah. yeah. And the bottom line is that the Tachlis HaKavana, the way the Friedrich Rebbe explains in the Maimir Basi Lagani, is that we take the Shtus of Elam Haza, what he calls the Shtus Tul Umaza, the insanity of this world, and we transform it into Shtus Tikdusha. We need to take the Shekhar and turn it into Kesher, into Keresh. We need to take the, 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 the Shtus and turn it into Atzishitim and turn it into Mishkan. A tzaddik doesn't know what it means insanity, because a tzaddik or a malach, they don't, they never dealt with shtus, they never dealt with insanity in their life, because everything by them is straight and everything is the way it's supposed to be in their, they've always uh, crossed their T's and dotted their I's, everything is perfect, everything is logical. And then you have the Baal Tshuva, which, by the way, Dr. Rebbe, once he prided it, he said that my, my biggest accomplishment in life is that I made Baal Tshuva. 
about Shuvah is someone who has tasted shtus, tasted the insanity, done stupid things, acted against their own self-interests, destroyed their relationship with the Abishter. And then when about Shuvah, Be'eretz tziya ve'oyeb li mayim, the person realizes the dire situation and where they are, and how messed up they are. They're like, this doesn't work for me. <coughs> like there's a line, right? How, and, and how's that working out for you, right? How's that, working, how's that working out for you, right? How's that working out for us? It's not working out very well. And then the Baal Shuvah goes and he approaches the, and then he approaches his relationship with the Abishta, but as the Zayar says, Bechela Yatir. The passion, the intensity of the Baal Shuvah is so much greater than the intensity of the Tzaddik. Because the Tzaddik never didn't experience that thirst. The Tzaddik was never in the Eretz Tziyah V'oyib Limoim. The Tzaddik is the contrary. The Tzaddik is Kain Bakoydash Chazisicha. The Tzaddik is the one who's always Bakoydash Chazisicha. The Baal Shuvah is the Eretz Tziyah V'oyib. The Tzama Lecha Nafshi. And that brings to Ashtus the Gdusha. That means that brings to serving the Abishtar in an insane way. And that's a good thing. Serving the Abishtar in an insane way is a good thing. Think about it. In our world, when we really, really want something, when we really love something, we do crazy things. We do shtus. We need to have that shtus for the Eibishter. There's a chassid whose name is Rav Nachem Labkovsky. First night of Sukkot, he's in the Soviet Union. First night of Sukkot, one year. It was Arab Sukkot, and he's taken into the KGB for interrogation. comes night, it's Sukkot, and he's being interrogated, and in the middle of the interrogation, they put him out in the waiting room, they said, wait a few minutes, I'll come back to you. As soon as they left, as soon as they, he jumped out the window, ran home, made Kiddush, took a piece of challah, and ran back to the police station to be sitting there, and by the, by the time they came back, he was already back, uh, he was there. <laughs> Eventually, uh, a few hours later, they released him, they came home, and his wife and his kids, they were, are you nuts? <laughs> are you nuts? Can you imagine what would have happened if they would have come and you weren't there? Hey, what were you thinking? What are you thinking? <laughs> Sheldon can relate to the question, right? What are you thinking? You're not going to relate to the answer, Sheldon. He said, you know, Itaka wasn't thinking. <laughs> it was the first night of Sukkot. I wasn't logical. The only thing I had in my head was that it's Sukkot and I have to eat in the Sukkot and I acted, uh, yeah, it was a Meshagas. Shtus. Shtus. Shtus We're anyways going to do stupid things. We may as well do stupid things for the Eibishter. I, uh, I told you you wouldn't understand. It's good. Why, it's good. Why wouldn't, why wouldn't I relate to that? If you relate to that, then we've made progress in the 10 years they have any time. Sheldon, say l'chaim. I apologize. I have to change my perception of you, Sheldon. I have to adjust l'chaim. And this is part of, that's what I'm saying over here. A person has done Averis, and you can look, ah, oh, it's in Gehenim. That's this, and yeah, Averis is Gehenim. There's no question. But what's the point of the Averis? The point is with Shuvatan. And once you do Truva, you're back in Ganadin. And the Ganadin is a greater Ganadin because of the Averis. The new the, the new the old Gehenna becomes the new Ganadin. So let's enjoy. Let's enjoy, realize where we are, realize how important where we are is and what we're doing and where we are, and us with all our messed upness at the end of the day. At the end of the day, we're the ones who are gonna be who are busy creating this Dira and where they're gonna do it. We're going to bring Mashiach, and we're going to bring the Lekos, the Abish, the Gilead, of course, down here in this world, 
the Carter Mamish. Chaim Chaim Lebracha. Chaim. Chaim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 